Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah. It's a good thing to be here to worship the Most High Yah in spirit and in truth. It, let everything that have breath praise Jehovah. Hallelujah. 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 Lashana Tova, everyone. Happy New Year. This is the Hebrew New Year. This is the time of the renewing and the restoral of life. And as we even look outside this window, we see the trees blossoming and the plants starting to begin to bud again. The garden is starting to sprout. All things are starting to be renewed. Hallelujah. So this is how we know we're in the correct season and in the right time according to the Enoch calendar. Hallelujah. All praises to the Most High Yah. Today we have a great study um, that we want to bring forth by the Ruach HaKodesh. This is why America must fall. This is why America must fall. Why must America fall? We're living it out now, and we're seeing prophecy fulfilled right before our eyes. And we're going to talk about that today and its implications for us in the Ruach and the things that we need to do to get our houses in order and the things that we need to do to be prepared and to rejoice to know that our salvation draws nigh. So we're going to start with a prayer. We bless and praise your holy name, Yehoah Zibaot, Yehoah of hosts, Bashem, Adonainu, in the name of our Adonai, Yehoshua HaMashiach, Modim Rabim Lefeneka, we give thanks before you. Bishfil Ed HaShabbat Hazeh for this Shabbat day. Torah Yehoah Lashana Tova. We thank you for this new year. Ki Ata Notain Lanu Kodevarim, for you give us all things. And we are so grateful, Most High, to be able to worship you to see a new season, to come through the end of the last season and even the end of the uh, year of release. And we pray, Father, that you will break and release every demonic stronghold. And we thank you, Most High, for giving us victory over the adversary. We thank you for allowing us to put our, our feet on the necks of the adversary, Most High. Hallelujah. By your power, you gave divine breakthrough in this last year. And there were multiple uh, um, spirits, most high, to overcome that sought to stop the work of the Ruach going forth, to sort to, that sought to stop uh, the word from going forth, most high. And you've allowed the word to go forth in ways that it never has, even in this captivity. So we know that your hand is in our midst and that your power is mighty to redeem and overcome every adversary, seen and unseen. We pray for all of the body of Kai Yeshua, to, for the 12 tribes of Israel, and for the, uh, the, the Gentiles called by thy name. Wash us in the blood of the Lamb. Heal us, make us whole, restore us, renew us. Grant us favor and grace in this new year, Most High. Let not Satan overcome any of the saints, but we pray for your separation between the sheep and the goat, between the wheat and the tear, for the harvest time is here, Most High God. May we be counted worthy of your kingdom and worthy to escape the judgment of this Babylon. For it is fallen and it is fallen right before our eyes. All the praise, all the honor and the glory we give unto you. In your Yehoshua's name, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. A call to Shabbat shalom, family. Shabbat shalom. Um, it's great to be with you guys again another Shabbat day. Um, we thank you all for joining us for another Kai Yeshua lecture. Mm -hmm. um, and we're so grateful to each and every one of you all that support us weekly yes. so that the word is able to go forth, so that we're able to do the things that we need to do so that you guys can be fed. So again, we thank you, Toda, Toda for Toda um, We wanna start off by giving some Shabbat Shalom's to you yes. guys. Um, Shabbat Shalom to Sister Pamela hey. and Brother Nartagus. Shalom. Shabbat Shalom to Lee G and Sister Danielle. Okay. Shabbat Shalom to Brother Amit in the UK. Yes, it's hallelujah. Amit. Shabbat Shalom. Um, Shabbat Shalom to Natasha Irizari. Okay. Shabbat Shalom to Yakelia. Shabbat Shalom to Christelia. Shabbat Shalom to Ataya. Shabbat Shalom to Sister Isabel and uh, Brother Marcus. Shabbat Shalom. In California. McGuinn. Um, Shabbat Shalom, Ima Gwen. Okay. Uh, Shabbat Shalom uh, to uh, Sister Tracy. Sister Tracy. Hey. Shabbat Shalom to uh, Irene. Uh, Brother Irene. Hey. And um, Shabbat Shalom.
shalom to Z Mesger. Okay. Um, to Anthony 2019. Uh -huh. To Brother Logic 1611. Okay. Um, Shabbat shalom to April Abu. Mm, Shabbat, Shabbat shalom. shalom to the Hood family. That's right. And um, the McCray family. M Shabbat McCray's. shalom to you guys. And we said Sister Christelle, yeah, right? Yes, I did. James Milton Holmes Jr. Yes. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom to you. And Shabbat shalom to Sister Lisa Carson. Um, yes, y'all yeah, bless, bless you. Y'all yeah, bless you, sister. Brother Mark, sister Lee. Yes, brother yes. Mark, and sister Lee. Shabbat shalom to Liz Powell. Um, Shabbat shalom to Benjamin. Okay. Shabbat shalom to um, brother Danny. Yes, y'all yeah, bless you, brother Danny. Yes. Y'all yeah, bless you. Shabbat shalom to you. Shabbat shalom to Vanessa White. Shabbat shalom to brother Moses and Kiki. Okay. Um, Shabbat shalom to. Ima Eliana. Mm -hmm. Shabbat Shalom to Michelle Whitney. Shabbat Shalom to Yvonne Harding. Shabbat Shalom to Amar Yehuda. Okay. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom to Brother Clarence and Angela Burns. Did I Hallelujah. Say that? No, I don't okay. think so. Um, Shabbat Shalom to Brandy McNeil. Yes. Um, and do take this time finally to um, support the ministry. However, Please. The most high moves your heart to do so um there are three ways that you can do that you can go to the website click on the yellow donate button and you can donate there you can also donate at cash app yes. at dollar sign kayashua and at zale at kayashua at gmail.com so again we thank you all for all your support of the ministry we could not do it without you we love you bunches we pray for you continually um, and just, we just love you. We just want to give you all our love, all our thanks, Amen. Um, all our prayers, um, that everything goes well with you in this new year. And, um, I think that's about all I have okay. as far as people to introduce. We'll pray it be the most all high. Right. So now a reminder for you all after the Shabbat. Oh, of course I was saving them for last, um, because. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was going to get them at the end. You okay. Go ahead. And a special Shabbat Shalom to Brother Jonathan and Sister Zenny. Our hearts are with you. May Yah restore you, heal you, quicken you, renew you, and bless you abundantly. True and shy mm -hmm. as well. May Yah bless you and keep you abundantly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. And family, um, just a reminder, after the sun goes down, after Shabbat, wherever you are, um, feel free to go to HebrewIsraeliteScriptures.com to the website. And you can add to your collection. Um, as you know, we have the Hebrew Israelite Scriptures, Amen. the Gold Edition, written by us, to us, for us. Amen. Um, no other book like it. No other book like None. it? None. Praise yes. God. Uh, with all the names restored back to Hebrew. Okay. We also have, for those Hebrew learning, yes. Hebrews, our language. Um, we have the Testament of Yahshua. Um, it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Revelations, all in English and Hebrew. Mm -hmm. So it will help you with um, your studies and learning your Hebrew. It's a very, very good read. Yes. Um, I've been in it a lot myself. Okay. We also have, um, for you all learning Hebrew, we have the Book and Secrets of Enoch. Again, this is in Hebrew and English. Yes. Where else you, where else you know, Yeah. Tell the them. only of its kind. That's right. You can't find that anywhere else. Mm -mm. So praise Yehoshua and Yehoah for um, their Ruach Kakodesh of praise allowing uh, the ministry to be able to bring forth such a thing. Um, we're honored. Amen. Uh, we also have the name book, the His Word Concordance. Mm -hmm. So um, if you're looking to change your name, um, or just learn different things about names, the meaning of names in Hebrews. Indeed. In Hebrew, this is the book. It's a must-have. It will help you um, with all of those things. And we have the Lost Acts of the Holy Apostles. Yes. Um, this book is very profound. Um, it gives us a much more deeper understanding of what the apostles the 13 of them, um, including Paul, show what they had to go through when they were on the earth. Amen. So 
this book is a very, very good read. And um, it, it, it helps us to understand that what we're going through, it really isn't a lot compared to what these Ooh. guys had to go Amen. through. Amen. Um, so Pillars it's a very humbling, very yes. humbling book. And most recent, Bang Jediah. Cain. <laughs> Yosef, the lost prince of Israel. Mm. Um, this is the newest addition to our library. Um, it's written for the youth of the Hebrews by the youth of yes. Hebrews. Um, a lot of pictures, um, large print. There's precepts, colored from the Old Testament, and Pain. I believe blue, correct? Yes, um, royal blue. Yeah. Uh, there is also, he put inside um, a like a bio, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. a bio of himself. And how his book came along, a picture. He drew a picture of himself. That's the last page, I believe. Also, if I can find it here. There we go. Looks a lot like him, too. He did a wonderful job <laughs> in this photo. And as you can see in the background, he drew Jerusalem. King. Wonderful job. Wonderful job. Praise the Lord. Amen. And what you guys have all been emailing about and waiting for <laughs> is finally here. Dang. The Enoch calendar for 2021 yes. and 2022. Um, it has feast days, so you can get with your employers now. Yes. You can request your days off that you need off. Um, it has the martyrdoms of the apostles. Yes, indeed. Um, Where else are they going to find that? Uh, I don't believe anywhere don't think that I've seen. That I know. That yeah. I've seen. Um, it also has the, um, the feast days, the, the new yes. renewed months. Mm -hmm, the renewed months. It has every everything is color coded. Um, as you can see here, the midst of the week when Yehoshua was born mm -hmm. is all here in purple. Um, so you got the Maseroth for every month and it's also written for you in Hebrew and yes. spelled out in Hebrew for you. And of course you have your English so you know what the month actually is in Hebrew. A lot of wonderful, beautiful photos um, are inside as well. It's lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, we're so grateful to be able to present you guys with this. Amen. So do, um, after Shabbat, after sun goes down, do go ahead and get your orders in for the calendar. Um, because the first shipment is almost out. So okay. um, it's selling out so fast. So Told our family. Y'all bless you. Toda. It's it's flying. Toda. Yes. Hallelujah. So again, family, we love you. Um, we're praying for you and we thank you guys for your continual support. Again, um, however you feel moved to support, you can do so at Zale at Kayashu at gmail.com. You can also do so at Cash App at dollar sign Kayashua. And you can go to the website and click that yellow donate button and you can donate there at kayashu at gmail.com. Hallelujah. We love you, family. Shabbat Amen. shalom. Shabbat shalom. You guys ready? Okay. All right, let's turn to the book. First, I want to show where we are right now. We're in the Enoch calendar. We're in the month of Aviv. Okay, Aviv also um, means spring. So the word for spring is the, is the word for the first month of the year. So that's where we are right now, and let me erase this right here. Okay, so we're in the month of Aviv, and currently, let me get this together. Currently, we're right here on Aviv the third, this Shabbat. So um, we have one week left, right? And then on the thirty-first is Aviv the fourteenth. And that's when we start to uh, our, our Passover season. So um, what I wanted to say was um, this is the equinox, um, which is uh, March the 17th. And March the 18th is the New Year's Day. So this is where we are three days from the New Year. Now, something important is about to happen and take place um, next week which I want to speak about quickly before we get into the study. So let's go to the book of um, Exodus chapter 12. So 
we're going to turn to the Hebrew Israelite scriptures. Shemot is Exodus. And let's go to chapter 12, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. All right. We are in the Hebrews, uh, I'm sorry, the Hezrar Gold in the book of Exodus. Shemot in Hebrew, in mm -hmm. Hebrew chapter 12, starting at verse 1. Right. And Yahweh spake unto Moshe mm -hmm. and Aharon in the land of Mitzrayim, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. Aviv, go ahead. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Also known as Nisan as well. Go ahead. Verse 3. Speak ye mm -hmm. unto all the congregation of Yisrael, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb. On the tenth day of this month shall everyone take a lamb. So I'm going to go back to the calendar now. Okay. All right. So starting next Shabbat, right here, this is when the lamb would be selected. Every family and every household would begin selecting their lamb on the 10th of Aviv, starting from this Shabbat. So that's next Shabbat. The 10th of Aviv represents when Yehoshua came into Jerusalem on the donkey. So between the 10th and the 14th, he was presented before the elders, the chief priests, the scribes, and the Pharisees. And they began to question and persecute Yehoshua to try to find fault within him. So it's in this season between the 10th of Aviv and the 14th that you examine your lamb and you must find a lamb without, uh, I was going to say spot, wrinkle, or blemish, but without blemish. And this was done when he came to Jerusalem. They began to accuse him. They began to test him. They began to question him. And he was able to uh, put them to shame and they could not condemn him nor convict him of anything, making him fit to be the Lamb of Elohim. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's happening next Shabbat. So I wanted to just let you know our Hebraic culture that we're now on the third of Aviv. Aviv, the 10th, starts the selection process. So between the 10th and the 14th, everyone, you need to go get your lamb. I don't want to see anybody else not, you know, watching the videos and so forth, but not keeping the feast. It's important now that we keep the feast, everybody. This is this is something that we need to do to show the Messiah that we're ready for his return. And now that we all have the calendar, you have it now in hand. Now everyone has it in hand. You can plan your whole year in advance. We can get the whole nation on one accord. Hallelujah. So this is extremely important because when the... The lamb, the Passover lamb is slain and then it's eaten before the rise of the sun um, the next day on, uh, which would be uh, uh, April 1st. Before the sun comes up, everyone needs to burn what? The, lamb. the remains. Whatever has not been eaten of the lamb needs to be burned. So what that is, is that is a burnt offering. That's a fire offering. And if we do that properly, we go outside and we put it on a, a, a grill or a stove and we burn it outside and a pillar of smoke will rise. So once all Israel is on accord with the Enoch calendar, these fire offerings will be ascending to heaven all over the world at the same time. This is a nuclear weapon in the spiritual realm against the devil. Let me say it again. This is a nuclear bomb against Satan and his kingdom. Hallelujah. This is why these revelations are so important. And now that we have the calendar and the Most High helped us to produce it, now we have the tools needed to be on one accord as a people. Hallelujah. 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 So the revelation for the Enoch calendar was first brought forth through Kai Yeshua seven years ago in 2012 and 2013. Now we're in 2021. This is the accurate count, and this has the year of release included, which no other quote-unquote Enoch calendar has, because many of them seen the original revelation, and they began to alter it. But they did not know what to do at the end of the seventh year. So this is what we must do, and this is why this is all important 
for the nation of Israel. So as y'all receive your calendars and see these videos, you spread this truth amongst all of the congregations in Israel so that we can be on one accord. Because they all know about the Enoch calendar now, but they have to do it in spirit and in truth, and they have to keep it accordingly as it has been revealed. This is extremely important for uh, us to be on one accord, to have one doctrine, to be one people. I just wanted to point that out before we got into the lesson. Okay. Any questions? We good? All right. Hallelujah. So now let's start. Let's turn to the book of Revelations. We're going to read a little bit in Hebrew. I'm going to read in Hebrew, and I want you to read in English, and we want to look at the times that we're going into. But before I do, let me, uh, let me show you what happened this week on video. Um, Babylon the Great is falling. It's falling. Oh, man. So we're going to see what happened to President Biden uh, just a day or two ago while he was boarding his Air Force One jet. And this is before the whole world and China and Russia have been commenting on the uh, frailty of the president, Joe Biden, and that he is not able to carry this nation. Um, and the, the main enemies of this nation are looking around and they're seeing weaknesses in Babylon. So we're in a, a, a definitely a prophetic time. This is the time and the season to get our households in order to get our hearts and our faith right with the Most High Yah. Going up the stairs. Let's see what happens. One, two, three. Fall all the way down. He stumbled twice and fell all the way on the third try. That's scriptural. It says in the Bible, in the scriptures, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every matter be established. It can be established that Babylon as a nation is falling. It's falling. And it's become a habitation of devils. We're watching it happen live. This happened this week. We're in a, an extremely prophetic time. We're going to rewind that a little bit, and we're going to play it again. Let's see. One, two, three, all the way down. Mm, 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 mm. Yehoshua says, everyone that humbles themselves shall be honored, and all that honor themselves shall be abased. We're seeing the abasement of the United States of America through its top leader, the President Joe Biden. This is prophetic, and anyone with spiritual ears can hear. Those who have ears, let them hear what the Ruach is saying unto the assemblies. Let me play the rest of this video, and then we'll get to the word. One other thing I'd like to mention before we play the remainder of this is that since Joe Biden has became president, since he's filled the office, he has yet to hold a press conference. He has not held a single press conference where uh, reporters are able to ask him whatever question they like. They have the White House uh, media room, and usually the president would go there and he would take comments. Joe Biden, as of now, which is March 18th, right, today? 20th. As of the 20th, he has yet to take live questions from any reporter. He only does conferences or press, quote unquote, press conference, which is not a real press conference with uh, uh, what they call the screen um, that you read from. I can't think of the name. Huh? The teleprompter. the teleprompter. He will only make statements based off of that, which is uh, he reads from a teleprompter, and he cannot and does not answer any questions or make statements without them. The president of the United States is not in the right frame of mind, and he is not in good health. This is a sign of the times of America's decline. It's at the end of the age of America. One, two, Three. You don't even see him no more from the side of you, right? Disappeared, right? 
Mm -hmm. This is a signal for us to be ready to get our households in order to have our faith right. And he could try to salute and all that, but it's already given the signal around the world that Babylon the Great is falling. So let's get into the study. Hallelujah. Let's turn to the book of Revelations. We're going to the Testament of Yahshua. All right. The Testament of Yahshua. Uh, Revelations. Let's go to 14. Hifgalut in Hebrew. The revealing of. Hallelujah. You there? Okay. The Lamb and the 144,000. That's where we're going to start from. All right. Verse 1. Okay. Wa'ere wehine se omed al har Zion, and behold, the Lamb stood on the Mount of Zion, Mount Zion, with emo me'at elef, wa'arba'im, wa'arba'ah, and with him were one hundred thousand and forty and four, alafim, one hundred and forty-four thousand. Ushemo Washem Abiu Katub Al Mitzkotam, and the name of the Father uh, was written upon their foreheads. Go ahead. We are in the book of Revelation, Hit Galut, okay. in Hebrew, starting at verse 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty and four thousand having his name and his father's name written in their foreheads. Hallelujah. Now the 144,000 are a special group of saints who are virgins for the kingdom's sake. That's probably and perhaps the hardest thing to do in this in this world, excuse me, in this world system of Babylon where everything is uh, centered around fornication and lust and desire and so forth. So these are the highest of the levels of saints. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 2. What wa eshma quo min hashamayim. And uh, a voice was heard from heavens. Ke quo mayim, a voice as water. Rabin, many waters. Uke quo ra'am gadol, and as a voice of great thunders. Waha quo ashir shamati, and I heard the voice. Ka quo tofse. And I heard the vo voice of, hmm, Tose, I'm not sure. Kinor, harps. Menagnim be koronotehim. Verse 2, go ahead. Verse 2. And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, King. and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with mm. their harps. Oh, that's it? Uh -huh. Okay. Verse 3. Shir Kadash. And they sang a new song. Lifne Hakise. Before the throne were Lifne Arba Hakayot. And before the four uh, beasts. U Lifne. Were Lifne. Has Zikwanim. Um, and before the elders. Ain Isha Cole, and no man was able, little more, to learn Et Hashir Zulati to learn this song. Zulati Me'at Ha Elef, Wa Arba'im, Wa Arba'at Ha Alafim, except for the 144,000. Ha Nikmim Min Ha Amen. Verse 3. And they sang, as it were, a new song. Before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that the song, but the hundred and forty four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. Hallelujah. Verse 4. Ele, these are Him Asher Lo Nigoa Nigoal Nigoalu Banashim. These were those who were not. Uh, Goal uh, redeemed, I believe. 
banafshin with women ki ka betulo for they are virgins hema la these are virgins hem ha hokim akre hase and they follow after the lamb el kol asher la yelek um wheresoever he goes L.A. Nick knew Metok Beneha Adam, and these were redeemed from the sons of men, Lereshit Bekornim Le Elohim, and these are the first chosen of Elohim, Well I say, and of the Lamb. Verse 4. Verse 4. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto Elohim and to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Let me look up this root word defiled, which would be this root here. Gimel Aleph Lamed. Let's see what that says. I remember that as being also the word for uh, redeemed. So we're going to check that out. Gimel Aleph Lamed. Okay. A primitive root, H 1350. Go ahead and read it. Um, the, the Strong's number is H 1350. A primitive root to redeem. Mm. According to the um, Oriental Law of Kinship. Mm -hmm. to, to be next of kin. Next of kin. And as such, to buy back a relative's property, marry his widow, etc. So in, it says, at all avenger, deliver. Mm -hmm. A Do, deliverer of a kinsfolk, kinsfolk. redeemer mm -hmm. to purchase, purchase or ransom. ransom. But man, I, so now I'm learning something new that is also the same word here. Da'al, H 1351, spelled exactly the same way, to defile and to pollute. Wow. Hallelujah. Interesting. Hebraic yeah. thought. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Let's go back to Revelations. Verse 5. With Tarmit. Lo nim sa'ah bepihem. And there was nothing found in their mouths. Ki tamimim. For they are clean and perfect. Hema lifne kise ha Elohim. Before the throne of Elohim. Go ahead. We are in Revelations um, chapter 14. Pick mm -hmm. And we're at verse 5. And in their mouth was found no guile, mm -hmm. for they are without fault. King, hallelujah. We're getting close to where I really want to pick up at. Now we're at the messages of the three angels. Verse 6. Wa ere ma'ak akir me ofeth. And I saw an angel, another angel me ofeth flying. Bakati in half or between. Hashemayim, the heavens, Uvpiwa, uh, Besora, Olam. And he was preaching or speaking the eternal gospel. Lebasar et Yoshve, and preaching to the inhabitants of the earth, Haaretz, where et kol goy to all the Gentiles, Umishpaka, and the family, Welashon Ha'am, and the families of the peoples of earth. Go ahead. Verse 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, mm. having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. This is what's happening right now. The gospel has now been preached all over the world. Hallelujah. We're in a season that's about to be shown here. Verse 7. Wayekwa, Wayekra, Beko Gadol, and he cried in a loud voice, Yer u et Yehoah, fear Yehoah, uh, uh, fear Elohim, Yer u et ha Elohim, Slika, with ha bo, lo kavo ki ba et mishpato, um, fear him, for the judgment is coming. And his glory will hishtak our way and worship la ose shemayim 
Um, the one who made the heavens, what Ha'aretz, and the earth, Et Hayam, and the sea, Umay Yanot Hamayim. Go ahead. Verse 7. Sing with a loud voice, Fear Elohim, mm. and give glory to him. Mm. For the hour of his judgment is come. Mm. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Right. So now once the gospel is preached, what happens after this? Read it again. Um, saying with a loud voice, mm -hmm. fear Elohim. Yes. And give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment is come. After the gospel is preached throughout the four corners of the earth, the hour of judgment draws nigh. That's the season we're entering into in this new year. This is the eighth year now, the beginning of a new cycle. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's, let's show something real quick. All right. Uh, let me go to this. Okay. The original revelation for Enoch's calendar was given in the year 20. The calendar started in 2013. So the Enoch calendar, this is why Babylon has to fall. The Enoch calendar originally was in 2013. Uh, we have 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021. So, we have year zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and now eight starts a new cycle. Okay? We're in... The season of 2021 in the Hebraic Enoch calendar now. So in the seven-year cycle, during the sixth year, we mentioned from the book of uh, Exodus, chapter 21, I believe, that in the sixth year, Hebrew slaves are to be set free. In the sixth year was the year of release. For a Hebrew slave. Twenty-one and two. Exodus twenty-one and two. Read that. The book of Exodus, Shemot in Hebrew, chapter twenty-one and verse two. Okay. If thou buy an Hebrew servant, mm -hmm. six years he shall serve, mm -hmm. and in the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. Right. So. Before the seventh year starts, you set that Hebrew slave free. This year of release for a Hebrew slave coincided perfectly with the 400 years prophesied. Wow. 400 years of slavery between 1619 and 2019 falls in line perfectly with this. Yehoshua says in Revelations 1 and 8. We're going to go to Revelations 1 and 8. The book of Hikalo 1 and 8. Go ahead. The book of Revelations, Hikalo in Hebrew. Chapter 1, starting at verse 8. I am Aleph, Aleph and Tau. Aleph and Tau. King. Ani ha'Aleph with Tau. Saith Yehoah. King. Which is. Uh -huh. And which was. Howay. Haya. And which is to come. Yihyeh. The Almighty. El Shaddai. Hallelujah. He is the Aleph and the Tau. That which is, that which was, and that which is to come. So now. Being that we know that he is the Aleph and the Tau, he is Aleph and he is Tau. Let's look up 
the numerical value for Aleph and Tau. I know some of you already know this, but I want to show you. This is why America has to fall. Hey, how did that get there? <laughs> <coughs> All right, I'm going to type in numerical value. Numerical value for Hebrew letters. Okay, so we're going to go to images and we're going to zoom in on any chart. That's a nice one right there in the center. So let's see, let's make that big. This is real time. All right, can you see that? We have the he 22 Hebrew letters and the numerical values. We have Aleph, Beit, Gimel, Dalit, He, Wow, Zion, and so forth. All the way down to Lamed, Mem, Nun, Samic, Ayin, all the way to Tau. So we start with Aleph and we end with Tau. What's the numerical value for Tau? 400. Four Hundred. What's the numerical value for Aleph? One. One. So when Yehoshua says, I am the Aleph in Tau, he's saying I am the first and the 400. So after 401 years, on the 401st year in Babylon begins judgment. For them breaking the year of release of Hebrew slaves. This is why Babylon has to fall. This is why Joe Biden is stumbling three times on the Air Force One before the whole world. This is prophetic. In the sixth year, which coincides with the year 2019, that's when they were supposed to let us free. And in the seventh year, there's a second time of release when they're supposed to pay us reparations. Let's read that. That should be the same chapter. Let's go to, actually, let's go to Deuteronomy 15. Debarim 15. Okay. This is the second type of release. Deuteronomy 15 and 1. This is why America has to fall. Go. The book of Deuteronomy. Oh, it didn't switch here. Give me one second. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. Amen. All right. The book of Deuteronomy, Deborim, in Hebrew... Chapter 15, starting at verse 1. Mm -hmm. At the end of every seven years, thou shalt make a release. So there's a second type of release made during the end of the seventh year. So that would have been the year 2020. This is why Babylon has to fall. So I'm going to color this in this pink here. 2020 is the second release. The year of release for reparations. This is why in 2020, during the election cycle, reparations was the main, the, the main talking point, the main topic throughout the entire election process. When all the candidates were, uh, were running, this is the main thing that got Kamala Harris knocked out the box early. She said she refused to do anything for black people. To make reparations. And now they went against the will of the people and they're going to make her president anyway. Judgments have to come for this. Joe Biden also. These two, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, are the main two single people in U.S. history who have locked up more Israelites as Hebrew slaves than anyone else in American history. Joe Biden created Biden's law which made it legal to lock up black people for almost anything. 
with a much higher uh, uh, um, incarceration rate and time period than that of our white and European counterparts. Joe Biden was responsible for that, and Kamala Harris took the ball and ran with it in the state of California, locking up any, more than anyone else in U.S. history. Joe Biden passed the law, Kamala Harris wielded that law to lock up more than anyone else in U.S. history. Do you think it's coincidence that America is going down on their watch? Do you not know this is judgment against them for locking up so many Hebrew slaves and not setting them free? So for them to be in office in this new eighth year cycle is divine providence and judgment against the United States of America, and this is why the U.S. has to fall. Between the two of them, they have locked up more than any other people in all of United States history. We're talking a 400-year history. It's not a coincidence that they're in the driver's seat right now. They're in the driver's seat because now this is going to come upon their heads most likely during their time of uh, their jurisdiction. I would not be surprised. We have to wait because no one, no one knows the date, the hour, or the time. But look at what's happening. They're in the driver's seat right now in the 401st year period, the Olive and Tau. Judgments. So the year of release for reparations happens in the seventh year, which would have coincided with 2020 when they were running for office and the topic of reparations was a national and international topic. So let's finish reading that. Let's start at the top and read again. All right. The book of Deuteronomy, Debelim in Hebrew, chapter 15, starting at verse one. At the end of every seven years, Thou shalt make a release. Amen. And this is the manner of the release. Mm -hmm. Every creditor that lendeth ought unto his neighbor shall release it. Right. So even in the world, the way it is, is that if you have a, a, a debt on your credit, it's supposed to be removed every seven years. But they play games with that now, and they will sell that debt to a new creditor and keep it going, which is against Torah. But... The, the same concept is even in this world system. Go ahead. He shall not exact it of his neighbor mm -hmm. or of his brother because it is called Yehoah's release. So if anybody owes you money after this point, you just got to count it a loss. And Yah is faithful to restore, to restore that which the adversary has taken. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Verse 3. Mm -hmm. Trying to scroll up. Hold on okay. one second. There we go. Verse 3. Of a foreigner thou mayest exact it again. But that which is thine with thy brother, thine hand shall release. Isn't Esau supposed to be the brother of Yaakov? Mm -hmm. mm. Go ahead. <clears throat> Verse 4. Save when there shall be no poor among you. Mm -hmm. For Yehoah shall greatly bless thee in the land which Yehoah thy Elohim giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it. Right. Only if thou carefully hearken unto the voice of Yehoah thy Elohim to observe to do all these commandments which I command thee this day. Mm -hmm. For Yehoah thy Elohim blesseth thee. So as we start to keep these commandments in the seventh year, blessings start to come upon us, which means judgment start to fall upon the heathen and our oppressors. As we become faithful and obedient, this is the whole purpose of a lot of these religions teaching us the laws done away with. Because as long as we, the children of Israel, do away with the law, do away with Torah, then their kingdom remains. Our kingdom rises up when we seek obedience with the Father. So they've made up religions to teach us not to be obedient. And they misinterpret Paul's letters and twist these writings to justify themselves. 
which Kepha or Peter said they do this to their own destruction. Second Peter chapter three. Go ahead. Verse six. For Yehovah thy Elohim blessed mm -hmm. as he promised thee. Does Yah break his promises? He does not. He said if we're faithful, he will bless us in this year of release. Go ahead. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, but thou shalt not borrow. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt reign over many nations, but they shall not reign over thee. This is the main reason why they teach our people to be lawless. They teach us, believe it or not, that the laws of Yah are done away with, but then they tell us to follow the laws of man. What hypocrisy is that? Is that not supreme hypocrisy? How can we be more concerned about the laws of man which change and blow with the wind? If you have enough people to vote in one direction or the other, you can change the laws. But the, the law and the word of Yah abideth and remains forever. So they would take the everlasting law and tell us that's done away with, but follow the laws of man. Which promotes all kind of abomination and iniquity against the Most High Yah. This is why they do that. Let's go down to verse 9. No, let's... Go ahead. Let's just keep going. Okay. Go to seven. Okay. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 15, Deborah in Hebrew, starting at verse 7. If there be among you a poor man of one of thy brethren within any of thy gates in thy land, which Yehoah thy Elohim giveth thee. All right. In terms of housing and property ownership, in the United States of America, I want you to look up quickly and see what percentage of land ownership is owned by black people in the United States. Look this up now. Let's determine whether we can be considered poor or not. I want you to find a statistic. The percentage of Real estate ownership by black people. How much of the real estate in the United States of America do black people actually own? This can be used to determine biblically whether our people can be considered poor or not. Do we have any statistics yet? Not just yet. Okay. And then after that, I want you to get the statistics of, uh, we said real estate, business ownership. I want to get that next. The borrower is always a slave to the lender. So if they keep us from owning property, businesses, and so forth, we will always be a slave to them. If you've gotten it, you can forward it here to me, and I can show it to the people on the screen. Anybody got it? Not yet. Okay. All right. Let's see. Where did it go to? I don't know what just happened here. Oh, okay. I can't see it. Okay. Well, I didn't find that gap just yet, but it does say that the home ownership gap between whites. Well, right here, I have this. Read oh, this. Okay. Yeah, and then okay. we'll get what you have. All right. Unfortunately, the pattern of home ownership and generational wealth building. Go ahead. Unfortunately, that pattern of home ownership and generational wealth building is broken for many black families. Mm. In the first quarter of 2020, 44% of black families own their home, compared with 73.7% of white families. So less than half of black people actually own their homes, and almost three quarters of white folk own their homes. Okay. Even though we built this nation, and they, they did not. According to the Census Bureau, 
The gap is wider in some cities mm -hmm. with just 25% of black families owning a home in Minneapolis compared with 76% of whites. Here we go. Which is the widest gap in U.S. cities with more than 1 million residents. A study by Redfin Real Estate Brokerage found in D.C. 51% of black households right. are homeowners. The highest rate in the country. Right. But far lower than. But far lower than the 70% of white households that are homeowners. Right. So I think it's safe to say that us as a people can be considered poor as compared to our white counterparts. This is sound doctrine, right? So now let's go back to the scripture. Now. Deuteronomy 15 and 7. If there be among you a poor man of any one of thy brethren within any of thy gates in thy land, which Jehovah thy Elohim giveth thee, thou shalt not harden thy heart. So when they say you owe us reparations, they are not supposed to harden their heart. What happened? Didn't they harden their heart, Joe Biden, when asked, would he give reparations to black America? Did he say yes or did he say no? What about Kamala Harris? Did they say yes or did they say no? no Yet they're passing laws for Asian Americans, Indian Americans, Hispanic Americans, and every other people that did not build this nation but came here and benefited after it was built by the tribe of Judah. They hardened their hearts. They hardened their hearts. Read it again. Verse 7. If there be among you a poor man of one of thy brethren within any of thy gates in thy land which Yehoah thy Elohim giveth thee, thou shalt not harden thine heart, nor shut thine hand from thy poor nor brother. Nor close your hand from your poor brother when you're in a power, in position of power and you have wealth to give. Go ahead. But thou shalt open thine hand wide mm -hmm. unto him. Mm -hmm. And shall surely lend him sufficient for his need. This is supposed to happen in the seventh year. You set the Hebrew slave free on the sixth year. And then during the seventh year, you restore all that you owe him. You give him reparations. Go ahead. In that which he wanted. Verse 9. Beware. Beware. What does beware mean? Pay attention. Yes. Caution. Caution. Do not do this. Go ahead. Beware that there be not a thought in thy wicked heart. Joe Biden, Kamala Harris. <clears throat> Saying the seventh year, the year of release. 2020. Is at hand. Mm -hmm. And thine eye be evil and against. And then thine eye. Be evil against thy poor against brother. Against thy poor brother. Saying the seventh year, which is 2020, is at hand, and thine eye be evil against thy poor brother. That's what they did. This is why America has to fall. Go ahead. And thou givest him not. Did they give us anything? They did not. The most they said they would do is they would do a study, perhaps, to see if we were worthy of reparations. To see... In fact, how much damage slavery could have done to our people, or maybe we're just making it up. So maybe they'll think about doing a study to determine if there's any real damage. But the gay community and the LGBT community and so forth, they all have received an abundance of grants, money, laws, and so forth to benefit them who did not build the nation, but black America did. This is why America has to fall. Go ahead. And thou givest him not. Mm. And he cry unto Jehovah. It's against time him. for us to cry unto Jehovah against Babylon. Mm. It's time. It's time. We served our time. We served our sentence. It's okay. We can let go now. We can cry out now for judgment against this place. We, we did our time. And they won't let us free. And they won't restore that which they owe us. This is why Babylon has to fall. Mm -hmm. 
And it be sin unto thee. And it be a sin unto thee. So this is a sin. And this is why Biden and Harris will probably cause this nation to fall. It's very possible. But this is why they're falling down. Mm. Verse 10. Verse 10. Thou shalt surely give him, and thine heart shall not be grieved when thou givest unto him. What happens when you even speak about these things? You've already received a reward. What do you mean? Oh, if you speak about giving to people. What I'm saying is when the topic of reparations is even presented to white America, how do they respond? With anger, with wrath, greed, physical violence, murder, riots, terrorism. Ooh. Terrorism, actually, is how many of them have responded. Terrorism is how they have responded. Read that again, verse 9. Verse 9. Verse 9. Beware that there be not a thought in thy wicked heart. Mm, he already knows the hearts of man. Saying, the seventh year, 2020, the year of release is at hand. Mm -hmm. And thine I be evil against thy poor brother, mm. and thou givest him not. They gave us nothing and gave to every other group, every other immigrant group. And he cry unto Jehovah against thee, and it be sin unto thee. Thou shalt surely give him, and thine heart shall not be grieved when thou givest unto Their heart is grieved when we even talk about it. Look what happened to Sharon Osborne this week. Just talking about racial inequality. Look what happened a week prior to that. Pierce Morgan. Just talking about it grieves their spirit. And they refuse to acknowledge the damage that they have done generationally against our people. This is why America has to fall. This is why the Enoch calendar is so important. You can only see this through the Enoch calendar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This can only be seen through the Enoch calendar. There's no other calendar that does this. And it's too late now for anyone else to try to make these adjustments to the calendar. This is the original source of the Enoch calendar. This Kai Yeshua. Hallelujah. So now to try to make these adjustments is too late. It's already been given here. The seventh year coincides with 2020, which is when revelation, uh, reparations were discussed and they denied given to their brother. Their heart was hardened. Their heart was grieved. So now, in this new season of 2021, is let me spell it out for you. Let's see. J U D G E M E N T S S S S. Many judgments are on the way here now. Hallelujah. This is the season to get your houses in order, Israel. This is the season to get your heart where it needs to be. Judgment starts first where? In the house of Elohim amongst our people. So you'll see this mentioned in the book of Revelation. So let's go back to it. Revelation 14. Revelations 14. We started reading in Hebrew. Verse 8. Verse 8. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Go ahead. The book of Revelations. Pick a loop in Hebrew. Starting at verse 8. And there followed another angel saying. Babylon. Babel. Babel is fallen. It's fallen. It's fallen. It's fallen. This is what the angel said. The angel of Yah told us that this was going to happen. Babylon the Great is fallen. It's fallen. All praise to the Most High. Hallelujah. 
He knows the end from the beginning. Babylon the Great, the ambassador, the king, the president of Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen. Hallelujah. 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 Let's read that again. Verse 8. Verse 8. Mm -hmm. And there followed another angel saying, Babel is fallen, is fallen. That's right. Go ahead. That great city. Why? Because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Because they turned the whole world out. Hmm. This is the time to come out of her, my people. But yet, we're seeing actually a lot of our people going right back into her. Because in the sixth year, when the Hebrew slave is set free, that Hebrew slave has the option to say, I like it here with my master. And I want to nail my ear to the doorpost of the master's house and if you do that you must serve that master for how long forever. forever so now we're seeing some in israel actually nail their ear back to the door of babylon after after Yehoshua has come to set us free yeah. mm, 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 mm. read verse nine and the third angel followed them mm -hmm. saying with a loud voice if any man worship the beast, don't worship the system and his image, or the image, and receive his mark in his forehead mm -hmm. or in his hand, go ahead. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of Elohim, mm. which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone. In the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Mm, verse 11. Verse 11. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. Forever now. You can sell your soul and you can be rich and wealthy and famous for what? Let's say 50 years. Let's say 100 years. But what is the comparison? Oh, man. What is the comparison of that burning forever? Burning forever versus even a hundred years of fame and wealth. Go ahead. Verse 11. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day. No Shabbat for them. No rest. So how do we have Shabbat now and some people still just don't want to keep it? Mm. This is showing Yah, yes, we want to be with you in the eternal Shabbat day. We want that eternal rest. So when you choose not to keep the Shabbat day, now you're showing him and you're telling him that the, the real Sabbath is not really that important to you. And this is what the other religions have really pressed upon our people, that the Shabbat is done away with. It is done away with for those who have no rest. Those who are on the lake of fire and brimstone, yeah, the Shabbat is done away with for them. You're absolutely right. But for the faithful, we're looking forward to that eternal Sabbath time of rest. Go ahead. <coughs> and they have no rest day nor night. No rest day or night. Who worship the beast and his image, mm -hmm. and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Mm -hmm. Here are they that, that keep, keep the commandments and... Of Elohim and the, the faith, faith of Yehoshua. So you can't just be Torah based only and say, well, I keep the commandments and you deny Yehoshua. And you can't be Christian where you say, well, I believe in the Messiah, but I don't keep the commandments. Either way will lead you to the lake of fire. These are the words of the Bible. These are the words of the Holy Scriptures. Read it again. Verse 12 is extremely important. Um, the book of Re Revelations, verse 12, chapter 14, I'm sorry. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments they of Elohim. Keep the commandments. And the faith and of Yahushua. And the faith of Yahushua. Go ahead. Verse 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, blessed are the dead which die in Adonai mm -hmm. from henceforth. Yea, saith the Ruach, that they may rest, rest. from their labors. Yes. And their work 
works do follow them. They rest from their labors, their toil and labor, and their works follow them. That's the Sabbath. So saying the Sabbath is done away with, that means you're not worthy of this rest. Go ahead. Verse 14. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one set like unto the Son of Man having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. But why is there a sharp sickle in his hand? To separate the wheat from the tares. So as Babylon is falling, you're going to see a division between the wheat and the tares. And it's happening. It's happening right before us. You're seeing the separation now as Babylon is falling. So you see Joe Biden falling. That means wheat and tares are going to separate. Sheep and goat are going to separate. This is why America must fall. This sickle is going to reap in the harvest. Some go into the barn or the storehouse and others go into the fire. And you won't be able to hide. You won't be able to pretend. Everything done in secret shall be manifest into the light. You can't hide and pretend that you're in this truth and in this faith. And it not be made known by the Most High Yah where your heart really stands. James 1 and 8, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. All of your ways will be made known. This is why the separation between wheat and tears is happening right now in your families, in your households, in your congregations, in your assemblies, uh, at your job, in your school, wherever you go, wheat and tears are being separated. Sheep and goats being separated because Babylon is falling and the gospel has been preached. This is all in one chapter. Go ahead. Revelations, um, chapter 14, starting at verse 15. And another angel came out of the temple mm crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud. Thrust. Thrust in thy sickle mm. and reap. Reap. For the time is come for thee to for reap. For the time is come for thee to reap. For the harvest of the earth is ripe. This is where we are right now. The harvest is ripe. Are you going to give away your eternal blessings for a few years of worldly pleasures? And forsake your eternal rest and being joined to the Most High Yah and His Son? Will you give that up for a few years of worldliness? This place doesn't have a whole long time to go. Let's just be honest. It doesn't even have 20 years. That's a long time. You know it has a lot less than that. Will we give up eternity, let's just say, for 20 years or less? Go ahead. Verse 16. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. This is what's happening. The earth is being reaped. And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven. He also had in his sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire. Mm. And cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, mm. for her grapes are fully ripe. Mm. So you're seeing people increase in their righteousness, or you're seeing people increase in their wickedness. The grapes are becoming full, whether they're good fruit or whether they're bad fruit. Mm. Verse 19. Verse 19. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth mm. and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great the great wine press of the wrath of mm. Elohim. Mm, mm, mm. And the wine press was trodden without the city. What and city? Babylon. Mm. Babylon. Mm. A separation has to be made first. Between the saints and the ants. <laughs> this is 
what we're seeing. The saints and the ants have to be divided. The sheep and the goat, the wheat and the tears. <laughs> then the ants are cast into the fire. Mm. And the blood of the city spills out. Go ahead. And the wine press was trodden without the city. Mm. And blood came out of the wine press even until the horse bridles by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. The height of a horse's bridle is probably about the height of a car, maybe the height of an SUV. So this place is going to be swimming in blood. Where do you want to be when it happens? Hallelujah. This is why America has to fall. This is why America. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Great study. Toda. Lovely study. Hallelujah. Lovely study. Uh, Shabbat Shalom again, family. Um, we just want to thank you all again for joining us for another Hebrew lecture. Um, again, do take your time out to do your alms, your donations, whatever you feel moved by the Spirit to do. Um, you can do that at Cash App at Dollar sign Kayashua. You can do it at Zell at Kayashua at gmail.com. And you can go to the website and click that yellow donate button. And you can do it there at Kayashua at gmail. Amen. Also, again, just a reminder um, after the sun goes down on Shabbat, you can go to the Hebrew Israelite scriptures.com and you can add into your or go to the gallery and you can add into your book selection. We have the His Word Gold that we read from every Shabbat. Yes. We also have the Testament of Yahshua, um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Revelations in Hebrew and English. And we have the lovely, um, the Book and Secrets of Enoch, the only of its kind. Amen that was translated from Hebrew into English. So it's written in Hebrew and English side by side. So as you read um, in English, you can also refer to the Hebrew side. Amen. Name seekers. We have our <laughs> His Word Concordance. Um, has several Hebrew names, the meanings of different names. So if you are in search for a name, this book is a must-have. You've got to add it to collection. Um, it's a very, very great book. Um, and it'll help you on your journey with names. Amen. Lovely, lovely. And the wonderful um, Lost Acts of the Holy Apostles. Uh, this book is one of my favorite. It hasn't been translated in a very long time. A lot of years. Yes. A lot of years. Um, so uh, this book is very profound. Um, it's a great read, great read. Uh, it will definitely humble you. It will definitely humble Indeed. you and change your view um, as to you. how you think. And bless you as well. Very, very much so. Love that book. And then the newest book from Jediah, Yeshua II, um, Yosef, the Lost Prince of Israel. Amen. Um, this book was written for our, from the youth of the Hebrews to the youth of the Hebrews. But um, adults, you will enjoy it as well. So do add to your collection. Mm -hmm. um, we thank you guys for all of your support in all of these um, endeavors that the Most High Yah has blessed the ministry to be able to bring forth. Praise and uh, what the study was pertaining to this Shabbat and last Shabbat. Again, the calendar, the Enoch calendar for 2021 and 2022. So it has everything that you're going to need going forward through this 2021 um, season. Yes. Uh, it's got your feast days, the four equinox are the two equinoxes and the two solstices. Okay, the divisions of um, times. Yes. Uh, it has the Matzeroth. Lovely pictures, lovely, lovely, lovely pictures. Um, we it also includes um, a, a drawing by Jediah the Second himself. 
he done the, the mazaro is kind of it's been old and kind of faded so to speak that's right and he so updated it he updated it it is absolutely beautiful yes family. absolutely beautiful so we have everything here from the update by Jediah the second. So it's got the months in English and in Hebrew with the names written out in Hebrew as well. So do get your calendars. Um, as I said earlier um, at the beginning, um, the first batch is going fast, fast, fast. Indeed. So do place your orders, family. Um, again, we love you guys. We thank you all for spending Shabbat after Shabbat with us. Um, we pray that Yehoshua and Yehoah covers, keeps, and blesses you and your family and all of your loved ones, and that he showers you with joy, shalom, and above all things, his love. Amen. So we want to show really quickly before we exit out again, that right now we're on Aviv the third. We're in March 2021, Aviv the third. We're on this Shabbat. Next Shabbat is when, between next Shabbat and Wednesday, the midst of the week is when you select your lamb. Make sure you're selecting the lamb that's without blemish. And then at the eve of the 31st begins the Passover and the crucifixion of our Adonai Yehoshua HaMashiach. So get yourselves in readiness that after next Shabbat, you should be getting your lamb and then we'll enjoy the Passover season as one body on one accord at the same time. Father, Yah, in Yehoshua's name, we bless you for this time of fellowship, for this time of grace and favor, for this time of the message that you've given, restoring to us the times and the calendars that we may know the days, the seasons, the years, Most High, that we might be in one accord with heaven. We thank you for this word and pray it goes forth to the hearts of all who believe. We thank you, Father, for this message and for even giving and restoring the calendar to the saints. Let us, Father, all worship in spirit and in truth. Write these words in our heart. Make us aware of the times. Open our eyes and our ears that we may know you and see your face. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory in Yehoshua's name. Hallelujah. Amen. Shabbat shalom, family. May the Most High bless you and keep you and let his face shine upon you. In Yehoshua's name, Shabbat shalom.